Well, that was a very professional and very classy performance by Max Verstappen, already a double world champion, heading for his third world championship to win the Austrian Grand Prix. How do you quantify his win? Well, there are always variables with which to play. Safety car came out, well, it came out right at the beginning. They had to go through the pit lane a couple of times while that uh, first corner debris was cleared up, nothing serious. But on lap 12, virtual safety car conditions were imposed and everybody came in except for... Max Verstappen and his teammate Sergio Perez, who was starting near the back of the grid. There was not so much of a gamble with him. But to have the race leader stay out when everybody around you is coming in, quite a brave decision. It looked at the time. But Red Bull and Max are stuck with their strategy, medium, hard, medium, the one recommended by Pirelli. And so it proved. It was perfect for winning the race. The only other thing was in the closing laps. And I guess this is another way of looking at the quality of his win max got on the radio to say well they got on the radio to him saying max tires are starting to overheat a bit maybe you should just back out of it and max said oh, i'd rather come in for new tires yeah we all knew what he was thinking give me a chance at fastest lap because at that moment on hard tires on his last new set of hard tires his teammate perez had actually set fastest lap so yeah literally two laps to go max comes in they put on a soft set of tires he goes out and he's just weaving down the straight as if it's friday practice getting the tires warm and completes the last lap yep with fastest lap to win the grand prix by five seconds he had something like 22 seconds over charles leclerc before that pit stop and i think yeah that says everything you need to say about max's drive today the only other thing was how good a start he made as well because we'd seen in the f2 race and in the sprint yesterday that being on the pole isn't necessarily a great thing for that very short run up into the first corner. If you're on the inside and you make a half reasonable start, you're going to be in good shape going into turn one. So Max had that pressure as well from that position on the grid, but he made an excellent start, got away first, immediately pulled across in front of Charles Leclerc, who on the front row started second, and then got into position for turn one. Lovely exit from turn one. A little bit of pressure from Charles in that opening lap, but Max was just head down, drive the lap, be clean, and then he just started to pull away one, two tenths a lap, and then beyond that, right up to the point when the virtual safety car came in. So it came into play. So yeah, a superb drive by Max, uh, almost unnoticed in many ways, because there's a lot going on down the field, as there always is in Austria. The TV cameras picking up a lot of the battles, a lot of the overtakes, but we shouldn't detract from, from the job Max did. He didn't get driver of the day. That went to Lando Norris, who finished fifth in the McLaren, beating in the process, the best from Mercedes, the best from Aston Martin, and was looking pretty good alongside Carlos Sainz for a while as well in the other Ferrari. So yeah, very good drive by Lando, but that's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Let's just talk about the Ferraris. Definite upgrade improvements as detailed by Shub. If you haven't seen that video from Friday, have a look, because it's mainly around the front wing, but they seem to have done a very good job of cleaning up turbulence getting more speed through the air in terms of top speed they were right there with red bull today let's have a look just while we're doing that let's just have a look at the top speeds because it is impressive to see how ferrari around austria anyway were right there in the red bull ballpark whether that'll be the same at silverstone where red bull for sure will be running different aerodynamics is another story but let's just have a look at these top speeds right now and you can see the speed trap and the finish line. Of course, we need to take into account that some of those are going to be DRS affected and some not. I suspect all of them are DRS open, except probably poor old Fernando Alonso. If that's with his DRS open, he's in trouble with the Aston Martin right at the back there. But most of them, I think, are comparable, if nothing else. And bear in mind, Red Bull have a very efficient car with the DRS open. But Sergio Perez, 325. Carlos Sainz, 322. Max Verstappen, 321. And Charles Leclerc, another, probably not to get a reading with the DRS open. But look where Carlos Sainz is, 322. So that's quite impressive. And then at the finish line, again, you can see that the Ferraris are right there with the Red Bulls within a kilometre so so very impressive uh, performance um, I'll, you can freeze frame that you can do whatever you like with it there the, the things yeah, I think the main thing to look at that is that the Aston Martins generally not very good in a straight line and the same goes for Mercedes with all their upgrades around Austria they there's this bit of this cliche thing in Formula One oh well we never really expected the car to go very well in Austria well if you didn't expect it to go well in Austria where is it going to go well I mean it's got some traction corners it's got a couple of high speed corners it's got some medium speed corners it's got a reasonable straight I mean if you're not good in any of those things what are you going to be good at anyway um yeah not not a great not a gr not great numbers for mercedes when you're looking at those times there uh, and just on that while we're talking about performance it was interesting after the race to hear perez say how good he thought the traction was 
of the Ferrari. This is Mr. Traction, Sergio Perez. Nobody better to give a, 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 an objective judgment on traction of the car in front than Sergio Perez, because he knows all about traction. And he said it was really good out of turn three and turn four for that matter. So very, uh, very encouraging the work at Ferrari. And after a difficult day yesterday for Charles Leclerc, when he looked all at sea in the wet and even on the drying track in the Ferrari, even though the Ferrari is a better balanced car now in theory and has more grip. Today, he was on the front row and he did really well. He wasn't particularly impressive in the early laps. Carlos Sainz was all over him. Um, and, and at one point, quite early on, got on the radio quite politely and said, oh, are we sticking to the arrangement? Uh, or can I, do a bit, can I go a bit quicker, please? And then later on in the race said, you know, I really want to have a go at Max. He definitely had more pace than Charles early on. But that possibly would have uh, resulted in overcooking the tyres. So we've got to give Charles the benefit of the doubt there in terms of looking after the car and going about as quickly as that car was going to go. And yeah, he did look like Charles Leclerc as a result in doing that. So yeah, all credit to him. Finished second and, and came out of the weekend, by my count, as the only driver not to get a track limits penalty. I think that's some, he should get some sort of award for that. A medal, maybe. Yeah, yeah no, good, good performance from Charles to come back. That'll give him a lot of confidence now going into Silverstone, assuming it doesn't rain, which of course is a massive assumption coming to England in early July. But Ferrari should be okay there. They should be okay relative to where they've been, that's for sure. And they should be okay relative to Mercedes and Aston Martin, which is a step forward. Whether they'll be anywhere near Red Bull, of course, is, is very, very unlikely. But uh, the signs are that they made some progress, which is more than can be said for example, for Mercedes, who looked pretty average throughout the race today. Lewis Hamilton was on the radio a lot complaining about the track limits penalty that he was given. Here's, here's a list of all the track limits that were penalties given during the race. And you can see there that the only really star driver, if you like, again, to have a track limits penalty was, apart from Carlos Sainz, Lewis Hamilton. And he was really annoyed about it. And he kept going on. At one point, he said, um, so what's happening with the other guys? Are they getting penalties as well? And when he was racing, when he was following Perez for a while, he, he said, this guy in front's going all over the place. It didn't, and I'm not sure he knew who it was. I think he knew it was Perez. I think I knew it wasn't. I think he knew it wasn't Max, but he probably forgot his name or something like that. Classic Lewis, brilliant. Uh, and then and then they originally they said it's turn 10 Lewis. And he got back on the radio after a while having thought about it. He said, well, where is it? What corner? Turn 10 Lewis, get on with it. But then there was a, a, there was a comment then from Toto Wolff two thirds of the way through the race, which to me, for me left a little bit of a bad taste in the mouth because it was again Lewis going on about track limits, but he got onto him again. It was a bit like that sort of comment to Charles Leclerc in Canada, a bit schoolmaster talking to the pupil. And he said something like, well, it was something like, he actually said, yes, Lewis, we know the car is bad. Get on and drive the race, please. And I just thought, wow, you know, for all the song, A, for all the song and dance about the 14B, and how the improvements are there and they're moving forward and the setup and got to get the tires in the window. Um, for all that, A and B, to speak to Lewis like that, get on and race. You know, this guy's a seven times world champion. He does kind of deserve a little bit more respect than that, I think. And I, I just felt a little bit uneasy hearing that. I wish we didn't hear all the radio. It probably goes on all the time. But I just wish we didn't hear the radio uh, all the time if it's going to be like that. And I'm surprised. I mean, if anything's going to be driving Lewis crazy it's going to be stuff like that because if nothing else he wants to enjoy his racing now there's not much else to do because he ain't going to be winning the car's not very good he's got the british grand prix coming up you know his race if you like so at least just enjoy it even if he's midfield but if you're going to be spoken to like that by your team principal it's not really fun either is it i wouldn't have thought it was anyway maybe lewis can shrug it off he seems to be able to shrug everything else off over the last two years very impressively um so good luck to him if he can do that good drive by sergio perez i mean yes of course it was a good drive by sergio perez but then that's what he needed to do from where he was on the grid after what happened in qualifying with all his track limit stuff and he's in the second best car in in formula one if not the equal best car in formula one so he should have finished third he could actually maybe have even finished second but um a very good drive nonetheless didn't hit anything and kept it going there was a big dice a big battle with carlos science towards the end of the race getting past science and carlos i thought drove really well and Sarah, and perez started saying oh you know he's moving more than once but equally 
Perez is being unbelievably tough and to the point where Carlos Sainz, who normally doesn't complain about things like this, started saying he's intimidating me. Um, make sure the stewards know about this. I'm not quite sure what he meant by intimidating, but it's quite a good word, actually, I think, for a Spanish Formula One driver to come up with because I kind of felt the same way. And yeah, and there were some great passes, great passes around the outside, repasses, and eventually, of course, he got ahead of Sainz. But it was, um, yeah, you know, those two guys racing one another. It was That was what, in many ways, people remember the Austrian Grand Prix for, I guess, that sort of racing, not for the lead, but that sort of racing, we often see it in in, in, uh, in Austria, around the outside of turn four, then you've got the inside line, line into five. It's quite good. A bit like the, uh, the first section in Sipang, Malaysia used to be. If you're on the outside of the first corner, you're in great shape for the second corner. Oh, a lot of circuits like that these days, but particularly those two. Um, but science, yeah, he was looking strong and he was pushing Leclerc quite hard, uncomfortably hard, I think. I don't think Charles would have felt very comfortable about that opening opening phase of the race. But then it kind of went wrong for Carlos because when they came in behind the virtual safety car, he then had to do the stack pit stop, so he lost there. Then he had a five-second penalty as well for, the, for a track limits thing, which Charles didn't. So that took him out of contention in terms of even beating... Charles Leclerc so yeah he finished fourth he won't be happy with that because he had the pace today and he's driven pretty well all weekend I think pretty uh pretty clean obviously some track limit stuff relative to Charles but a good weekend for Carlos Sainz again moving forward It'll be interesting to see how he goes at Silverstone so Lando Norris yeah did really well and had a good battle with Lewis for a while and then just got Lewis and pulled away from it if you're looking for a watershed moment from the 2023 season, it's probably that, you know, McLaren blowing Mercedes away. Lewis Hamilton, who was the quicker of the two Mercedes drivers today, blowing him away and pulling away. And Lewis on the radio, actually Toto on the radio, admitting that the car was not good. And and this after all the upgrades at, at Mercedes. We haven't, we've seen upgrades at McLaren, but nothing like the same steps forward, if you like, in terms of the amount of money they're spending within the budget cap. So McLaren will be really pleased with that. Really, really good performance. And uh, and Lando did what he what he does on these racetracks. When I say race, race in italics, where there's a lot of racing going on. And uh, we've seen him before, as I said yesterday, how well he can go in Austria. And this was another example. Really, a classic Lando drive. But we saw very little from Oscar Piastri today because he got involved in a first lap skirmish and where he was on the grid, new nose on lap one, and that was kind of the end of his race. So that was that. But yeah, very good. And Mercedes, not only will they be thinking, well, you know, Red Bull impossible. Ferrari have now done what we were hoping to do, which is one kick in the teeth. And then a second kick in the teeth. Now we're slower than McLaren. Yeah, we've caught up to Aston Martin, but McLaren have now got us. And, you know, it must be an Alpine. We're not that far away. Back half of the race, Pierre Gasly was doing the same sort of lap times as Lewis and George in the Alpine. So... Again, you know, not a very, very difficult time for Mercedes. Fernando Alonso had a relatively quiet race, relatively quiet for Fernando, that is. He started on hards, which kind of took him out in the early phase of the race, although he made a really good start, unlike his uh, his teammate, team leader, uh, Lance Stroll, who made a terrible start. And then his day was spent recovering from that. Eventually, he finished P10. Uh, so Fernando P7, Lance Stroll P10. Both Aston Martins in the points, which is which is something, of course. And Pierre Gasly got the other point in the top 10 in the Alpine by finishing ninth. So that was the Austrian Grand Prix, relatively short and sweet, as they are on that circuit. It was a lovely day, no rain. The crowd loved it. Lots of crowd in orange. There was a very moving tribute to Delano, the young driver we lost at Spa yesterday before the start. And it's good to see most of the drivers wearing black armbands as well in his memory. Takeaways from Austria, the sheer professionalism, I think that's the right word for this weekend to describe Max Verstappen and Red Bull to win the sprint race, set fastest lap and the Grand Prix. Can't do any better than that. Sergio Perez knows what that feels like, I think. The recovery of Ferrari, major steps forward in terms of the pace of that car, the balance and the grip. And the ongoing traumas at Mercedes, best summed up probably by Lewis about lap 10, lap 12, when they were telling him to be very careful of track limits. And he said something along the lines of, I can't keep the car on track. It just doesn't want to turn. To hear that from a driver of Lewis Hamilton's quality is, for me, absolutely shocking. Let's hope things improve for Mercedes as they head towards the home race at Silverstone this weekend. This is, of course, the first part of a doubleheader. And in the meantime, a big thanks to Jetcraft and to Pitbox.io for their support of this channel. Thanks to you too, 
the viewers. Stay safe. See you soon.